this is a piece I did. It basically there, it's called Seven Years or 2,555 days, I call it. And it's basically, uh, my, I make my calendar pages. Uh, so they're just uh, what I did every day, you know, just to plan out your week. Well, we squatted the building in 1986. In 1985, in the winter, we were having meetings about picking out a building. And there was a woman, Tanesh Weber, who was really the, uh, she kind of was the energy for, for the beginning of opening up this building. And she picked out the building. I was a bit of the foot soldier back then. But Tanesh came down with a guitar case uh, with a sledgehammer in it. And a one friend, this, this guy, Dab, um, you know, just opened up the guitar case and uh, opened up a little hole back there. Me and my brother, a couple other people from Rivington Street started going in the building at night when we started gutting out the building. But we were sneaking in through the back. We didn't really open up the front door until the spring. We wanted to be a little better prepared with barricades and so forth. So the first 72 days are the most important. Of course, they have to evict you through the courts if you've proven that you've been there. So we put a door on and we cut a hole in it and we start uh, sending mail to ourselves. We, we originally were a six o'clock squat and then we changed it to Bullet Space. We appropriated the, the name brand of heroin on the block that was uh, called Bullet. Not to romanticize the drug culture, but you know, all night you would hear Bullet, 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 just uh, trying to sell that product. So we said, might as well just call a bullet. I was in my early 20s. And uh, usually in your early 20s, you could live anywhere. You could live in uh, Alaska. You know, you got that extra strength. Because the winters were hard. You know, and I, I've been here since the beginning. And a lot of people would move out, you know, because the winters got cold. But uh, we would burn wood. We, we would make these homemade wood burning stoves. We would collect wood. Uh, wood pallets down in Chinatown. We had one toilet for five floors. So I had to piss in bottles for a couple years before, uh, before we got plumbing on each floor. squatters and then to this day uh, there's 11 buildings we're just in the process of being legalized we're the first building that got signed up and then there's another 10 buildings that will in the next year or two will be signed up a lot of us have regrets too because we were kind of used to self-help and we got a 60-year mortgage now to pay off the property the city sold us the buildings for basically a dollar each apartment but the deal was we had to bring them up to code so we had to borrow about seven hundred thousand uh, dollars to do that but it, we managed to finish and work it out and and our rents jumped pretty high but I guess compared to the market it's not too bad was this outrage and I guess the best example I could think of was in that post-punk period that I was involved in or the, there was that outrage of the Reagan Bush era or something so that's what I got involved in this building um, and it was self-help too it was you know you, you had to gut out the building put up the sheetrock do construction you know I come from that family too that are builders but just coming from a working class family you know we, it was kind of absurd to to study fine art so we we I was encouraged more to study commercial art. I was an illustrator. Or I worked for newspapers. Everyone thought I was a little crazy at when I, you know, from where I grew up or nor even at school. They would look at me like, this is someone that could, that's going to make it as an illustrator, as an artist, you know. And, and all of a sudden, he's living in an abandoned building on the Lower East Side. And, and uh, they were like, this, what happened to Castrucci? He's fucking crazy. <laughs> New York 
York went through a very dark period at this time. You know, with the the heroin culture, the crack cocaine, the AIDS epidemic, because it affected a lot of the art community. All his work is in this piece. A lot of my friends died. That's why it's been really nice, the events, the exhibitions downstairs, you know, seeing people again after 20 years with events, you know, just coming back. And I have a family now, and so uh, I'm a real conformist now. We have a mortgage. <laughs> we have a, uh, I have a car. <laughs> I, uh, but we're still trying to be who we, who we are or who we were somehow. I'm still keeping that, those roots.